and we're live. Hello, my name is Victor Ocho and welcome to the National Gaming Association's Associate Member Spotlight. This week, we're talking to Christopher Justice, President of Global Payments Gaming Solutions about how their cashless payment solutions are revolutionizing the, revolutionizing the gaming industry. Global Payments Gaming Solutions, a division of Global Payments, enable the world's gaming entertainment leaders to create enhanced gaming experiences for patrons and maximize spending across physical and digital channels. As an industry leader, Global Payments has made great strides in developing technology to advance cashless gaming options. We will, we will explore cashless technology's ability to remove friction in payments and how Global Payments Gaming Solutions is meeting these demands through the availability of VIP Mobility, the industry's first mobile solution, enabling true cashless gaming. But before we introduce Chris Justice, I'd like to show you this short video on VIP Mobility. Mary Charlotte? Welcome, Chris. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Victor. How about yourself? Good, good. So, what? What? Um, on that video, we saw a lot of uh, uh, a lot of imagery, a lot of a, um, uh, a mobile component, a cashless component. Um, so, what we're talking about here are, are these new cashless payment systems. So, my first question for you: How can payment solutions make the contacts payment process more seamless in the gaming industry? So very good question, very smart question. Yeah, absolutely. And I, thanks, for, thanks for teeing up the topic. I really appreciate it. I think, um, you know, as you really, as we think about gaming or I mean, let's all take a step back really, because it, at the heart of it all, right? Whether we're in gaming or wherever we are, we're consumers at heart. And I think when we start to look at what all of the trends associated to mobile adoption, start to think about self-service adoption in how consumers have changed their expert their expectations around how they conduct business and the things that they do each and every day uh, gaming's been one of the last places right where we've been able to adapt to that way of thinking we still are predominantly the only cash business left on the planet we've got very manual kind of clunky processes that people have to go through in order to actively participate with us as a business. And I think as we start to look at where consumers and expectations have gone, coupled with now adding the pandemic and the change in the way that we've all had to think about how we spend our time, how we spend our money, how we get entertainment, we really have to think differently as a business. And I think it really, to, to really get to the kind of the core of your question, I think it really involve, it really revolves around three things. Uh, the first being, I think we've got to really continue to focus on the customer experience. And as we think about the customer experience, it's, it's everything from how I go through the process of when I enter, how do I get to my favorite game? How do I play? How do I enjoy that experience? And then how do I, how do I leave? And the more efficient that we can make that process, the better. And I think that's where cashless comes in, that it allows me to Enter the, enter the facility from the parking lot with nothing in my pocket, find my favorite game, be able to sit down in my little COVID bubble, plexiglass bubble, fund up, the game, fund up my favorite game to my heart's content, play as much as I want, and when I'm done, I need to be able to leave as quickly, easily, and as efficiently as possible. And in order to do that, that customer experience is so incredibly key because the aggravation of long signups, clunky processes, 
friction filled environments is just going to, it's really going to destroy that customer experience. So we've really got to focus on that experience to be very, very logical, like a thoughtful process, like how, when you go through the URIC process with Amazon, really easy to go through, find the product that you want, put it in the cart, push a button, and you've completed your transaction and you've got certainty that, that your product is going to arrive at your door just as much as Amazon has certainty that those payments are going to get there. So that logical, seamless process is certainly one of the things I think is, is going to be very important. And folks in this environment really need to think about this very much in, in terms of not the way we would think about things as a retailer in that you're happy to be, now that you've driven someplace, you're happy to meander around the, the, uh, the, the, the shop picking up clothes, trying them all, and, and what have you. E-commerce is much more about really finding and looking at things very quickly. And as all of the consumer research would show, clicks kill in e-commerce. So the more, the more aggravation that I make it for you to get in and get started, the more likely you are to abandon your, your shopping cart. Mobile is even worse because now it's gone from mobile shopping to really mobile buying. So if clicks killed in, in e-commerce, it's certainly catastrophic when it comes to mobility. You've gotta be very fast, very efficient, very fluid, and that workflow is essential to delivering that incredible customer experience. So all of the little glitches and things that, that are out there, they've gotta be eradicated or the, pro or the product is dead and ultimately your investment in those products would be dead. It, it, it seems second, like, oh, go ahead. It seems like the adaption of, of, of these new digital products has just moved so amazingly fast that, that uh, I don't think anybody could have predicted that before the pandemic that we were, I think we were all hoping and waiting, but the pandemic seems to have really exacerbated the need for digital. Oh, well, most, most certainly, most certainly, because I think that need for digital really ties back in as well to kind of the second point that I wanted to make, uh, you know, relative to your first question, which is really around, you've got to be able to deliver the value that your guest requests. It's not about, hey, this is what I want to deliver, and I've got 75 things that I want to mash into an app, and I want to figure out how I can boil the ocean and create and solve all of the world's problems at the end of the day right we've all solved a bunch of problems when it comes to how the guests interact with us as, as casino properties but the important part now is how do we start to fill those gaps that exist how do we start to do things that the guest is really looking for because they're going to create that next wave of value that's going to help help drive the benefit in the the engagement that you want with those customers so i think about it a little bit like an uber so for example uber didn't just decide they were going to replace taxi cabs right and it's going to be the same clunky experience of just walking out on the street and hoping some random person drives up it's really about and it, it, it's really about a customer experience that says ah I know Victor is coming to pick me up. He's got a great rating. I can see where his car is on the map. So I know how long I have to get to the street corner. If it's raining, I know I can stand inside and I'll know when he pulls up because I've got a description of the car. I've got the license plate. I've got everything that I need. Payment is assured. So Victor now knows he can pick me up and take me wherever I want. And he's getting paid for the ride and I've got the comfort and the ability to know, right, I've got this streamlined experience that is night and day different than how things were as, you know, in the taxi cab world. So it's that delivering of that, all of those little extra values. It's still a ride. They didn't solve, right, the things that were already solved. They didn't build cars. They didn't manufacture drivers or what have you. They just added all of those unique new experiences that get that transportation guests really want. So as I think about cashless, it's how do you solve all of the kinds of new values that the customer's really looking for? And let's face it, especially in tribal land, all of our customers, they're our neighbors. Their kids are going to school with our kids. They're going to church with us on Sunday. They're sitting down and we're going out as friends, having dinner in restaurants and doing things together as a community. But on Friday night, when it's time to go play, they want absolutely nothing to do with us. They don't want to go have conversations at the cage and stand in line for 20 minutes 
or search the property to go find what they want to find. They want to come in and enjoy their experience. And so being able to deliver that cashless value to them to where you start to eliminate the 20 plus minutes that somebody's got to spend meandering around and allow them to actually go do what they're hoping to do. That's an incredible value that folks really want to have. And the third element of the whole puzzle piece is to me is really in and around execution. Um, execution is so important to so many things that we do, we do in the business. And this one is certainly um, part and parcel, I think, to maybe even one of the most important because no different than if you roll out a website that's clunky, that doesn't give your, doesn't give your guest what they're hoping to do. Like I go onto the website and I can't book my hotel room or I've got so many menus to get to to even get to my, my, uh, the booking engine, folks are gonna just abandon. And the problem with cashless is when they abandon, they abandon back to the old way. So they're abandoned, so they're wasting their 20 minutes wandering around the casino they will never go back and try this again. So a, it's truly a colossal failure to roll out a solution that's absolutely gonna fail when it has first contact with you as the guest. It's gotta be spot on, right? It's gotta be like any other thing because it's so much easier for me to just turn and walk away than it is to say, well, I wanna go through hours worth of aggravation. I wanna go through the help desk. I don't want any of that stuff, right? So. Folks that try it and don't like it, you know, typically are those folks that are never going to go come back to it again and you're, they're going to have that sour grapes kind of attitude. So, yeah, you do have to go through and deliver that right solution that's delivering the, the, the speed and efficiency and the certainty that I want as a guest to be able to sit down and play my game. And when you do that, you really get some really strong results. And I think those strong results are what's gonna drive that return on investment for everybody. And the results are, we're already seeing this through the network effect of our, of our payments engines, is there's a significant consolidation of play. So nobody's gonna think that, oh yeah, I'm gonna double my spend just because I get to pay with something on a mobile phone, right? That's ridiculous. But if I spend 25% at four different properties, Am I more likely to spend 50% at one and then reduce my spend elsewhere? Absolutely. And that's the kind of stuff that we're already seeing. We're, in, we're seeing increased frequency. We're also seeing the, the expansion of brand loyalty because now I'm making a decision about where I wanna play based on convenience and based on what's best for me. And those results are powerful. And even though I think most casinos in the country right now are having frankly the best year of their life. Um, huge, huge revenue upticks. I, in fact, I don't think I've talked to anybody probably in the last three months who has said this year isn't, isn't one of the best they've ever seen. I think we all realize though, the music's going to stop at some point. And what you really hope is when that music is stopped, you've developed a solution that is so powerful that when the customer finds a chair, it's in your place, not somewhere else. Because those people that, you know, certainly do adopt those are the ones that are gonna be attracting those guests. Those are gonna be the ones that are gonna keep those guests for a long time. And then when you think about what do you gotta to do to buy back my loyalty? What do you gotta to do to get me back when I've already got a place now that's built up points, right? I'm now at a higher tier level. I've got all the stuff I want and I've got this immense convenience. Boy, you're gonna to have to spend a lot now to get me to come back because I've already found a new place and a new home that's gonna be far more exciting for the long-winded answer but i think those are really important comments no 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 that, i i thought i thought that was very very informative um so what so what what differentiates vip mobility from from the other uh, products that are on the market you know there's there's a variety of of things um you know global is a 65 billion dollar company but yet as as such the gaming division we only focus on on you know certain in the in the u.s um, and as a business, though, we have this global expertise and global capability to understand what it takes to roll out mobile solutions around the world. We've seen what worked. We've seen what doesn't work. And so we've got a very, what's the right way to say this? I guess we've got a very focused way of delivering things that are very, very focused on the most important person in this entire ecosystem, which is the consumer. Because at the end of the day, if the consumer won't use it, 
it doesn't matter what you want in your casino. It doesn't matter what I want to deliver as a product organization. If they won't use it, you and I are wasting our time. It's got to be exactly what that customer wants. So we spent months and months and months talking to individual players about what are the things that need to be solved as you think about this user journey going into the gaming space. So incredibly important. So at the end of the day, um, it's that consumer experience which has driven our entire product roadmap from end to end. And in fact, um, a lot of our customers maybe don't really like, like to hear this, but my typically, I don't really care what you want as the casino, because until I get all the value props delivered to the customer based on their requests, right? Why should I spend time thinking about that? Because we're both going to fail. We're both going to waste our time and our money. So let's focus, let's focus on really that, that element. But as we were looking at what we had to de develop from a guest perspective, we also had some, some pretty core driving principles, one of which is it had to fit. It had to fit the existing environment. We couldn't require wholesale changes to the system or new ways of enrollment or new, new this, new that, because the problem of adding new anything is we're all busy. We all have a day job. So if I've got to require now, you know, the wholesale upgrade of a, you know, of a, of a CMS or what have you, or adding new modules or new this or new that, how many, how long is that going to take to be able to deliver? How expensive is that going to be to deliver? As I'm rolling out new solutions, that's going to mean changes to internal controls and regs and all of these kinds of things, which that in itself can be a challenging, right? Whether it's getting through uh, GLI or BMM, or whether it's getting through the TGA, all of those changes require a lot of conversation and, and make it very difficult. But the big thing that also does is it means changes to humans, and those humans are the people that are operating the casino. And change management in a casino is so incredibly difficult. If I can go through then and create a solution like we have with VIP Mobility, where it operates on existing systems, it operates the same way the casino operates, there's very little change management associated. Slot, slot operations, back office, accounting, tax, reconciliation, TGA, everybody does what they've always done. They rely on the same solutions that they've always done and they make the, the same decisions that they've always made. So as a result, it's a far easier way to implement a cashless solution that's going to deliver the results that are focused specifically on the guest and what the guest is, what the guest needs. So at its core, I guess, really some of the things that are, I guess, most unique about VIP mobility compared to some of the other things is the system itself is, is based on the trusted cashless wagering system that's been in, in gaming for 20 years. Every transaction that's performed is backed by a Tito ticket. So the same decisions that the casino makes tomorrow are based on the same decisions that they're made today. What's the Tito ticket? Did the system allow the, the Tito ticket to be accepted? Did the system value that Tito ticket appropriately, et cetera? So all of those same components are in place. So as a result, there's no additional audit processes or compliance processes. All of those things are in place. When the consumer has a dispute, the slot techs consult the same systems that they consult in terms of, of making the decision on whether they wanna do something with the guest or not. So it's very, very streamlined, it's very simple. And then from the consumer perspective, nothing can be easier. I download it from the app store like I do every other app. It operates like every other app. There's a lot of complexity that happens behind the scenes, but the user interface is really built in such a way, it's like you would expect. I want to get money, great, I push a button and I get my money. I want to play my favorite game, I play my favorite game. When I'm done for the day, I can close my phone and leave all that money there for my next visit, or I can go to any one of the kiosks and in a self-service fashion, I can get the cash that I want, or I can push a money and send the money back to, or push a button and send the money back to my bank. Which by the way, the most highly requested feature that we had in every interview as well as everything from an implementation perspective is how do I get my money back? Casinos are great at getting it, 
but I want to know I get my money back. So what we've done is we've built a really elegant solution to help them get their money back. And what we're also finding is the first transaction, right, is moving money in. The second is, okay, sure. How easy is it to get my money out? They go get, take a little piece of that out at the kiosk or what have you. And then once they've got the comfort level to know, hey, what do you know? This is just that easy. Then they start playing to their heart's content. But all the while, it's driving those huge results that everybody is looking for in terms of increased frequency, coin in, and what have you. So it's a, you know, it's a really powerful solution. I, I remember going to an event in Las Vegas, which was one of a, like three or four years ago, and it was a supposedly cashless environment. And when I went, it took me about two weeks to get my money back from, from that specific event. So I know exactly what you mean and some having that apprehension uh, and, and it's because you do wonder where you're going to get your money back. So I think having that ease of use is brings that comfort that I think most customers really want in their first transaction, you know, and then the familiarity, obviously, as you talk about the user interface is very important. Now, one of the things that you talked about was really interesting. You talk about the Tito tickets and the Tito, you know, which is really is more of a manifestation of this physical world that we all live in when as, as someone who's been in tribal gaming for, for a while now, I remember when Tito's were uh, uh, introduced, but so how does VIP mobility help bridge this gap between the physical and digital uh, uh, properties? Yeah, well, so in, in certainly, you know, certainly in tribal land, right, there, there hasn't been a whole lot of per se digital sports betting is starting to come about in certain jurisdictions, certainly iGaming, Mich Michigan, uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, what have you. Um, so it remains to be seen how that works, but at least as we think about things from a consumer perspective, all of us are part of this on-demand, right now, omni-channel environment. We can go into Nordstrom's and you know, look, look at clothes all the while we're looking at the Nordstrom's app for inventory for the different sizes that maybe I need and maybe it's coming from a different store. So I'm physically there, but I'm ordering in the store, having it delivered to my house to make sure my shopping experience is complete. So that whole digital ecosystem that we're all starting to really become much more tightly entwined in is really kind of one of the core components of our platform. Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, clicks kill. The more enrollments, the more problems that I create for that customer coming in, the less likely they are to do business. And we want to make that process easier. So our VIP preferred program that's been in hundreds and hundreds of casinos around the country for the last umpteen years has more than three and a half million registered users. When those users come in, the, they really start to experience a network effect, much like your Visa card, your MasterCard, or your, or your Apple Pay or Google Wallet. You sign up once, it's useful everywhere. So if I want to go into the casino, I can get money through, I could get money through the cage, I could get money in a self-service environment through the kiosk, I can download VIP mobility and have it in the palm of my hand. Likewise, if I want to go place a sports bet on one of the popular apps, or I want to play my online poker or something like that, I, that, that profile that's in VIP preferred transfers with me. And in a frictionless environment, I'm able to seamlessly connect everywhere. So I'm not having to go through a unique enrollment process now that I've decided to do something different at the property. So it's a lot easier for me to get in and participate. And even from, a, from an operator perspective, they get to enjoy the same benefits that you get to enjoy from the network effect that comes from a Visa, a MasterCard, or an Apple in the fact that somebody's, re somebody's done the enrollment process at Wells Fargo. Well, great. Now you get to accept their money quickly and easily without having to jump through a lot of hoops. So VIP Preferred does the same thing in gaming that those kinds of payment methods do in, in the, every other part of our lives. So it's a really a very much of a guest focused network kind of concept. It reminds you, you know, you, you, you mentioned earlier about Amazon and, and uh, I was just reading the other day that Amazon is launching a, another store and they've been experimenting on these new uh, stores where you actually watch it, you walk in, you're, you're an Amazon customer and you buy the product without standing in line, you actually leave and you're, uh, you're charged, you know, so this is a new digital environment that I think people We'll get used to it, and not only as Amazon Amazon changed its shopping experience online, but they're looking to change 
the physical shop, uh, shopping experience. I, I see some similarities here with, with your product also. I, that, I would that, completely that, agree that, with you. Yeah. yeah, no, I would, I would completely agree with you. Um, certainly they've got a variety of, of uh, they've got a variety of, of stores that, they, that they've launched. Um, there's, there's a variety of other folks that are in that space. But it's but the thing about that space, which is very similar to what we're talking about here relative to, to uh, VIP mobility and cashless, is the user experience is fantastic. They, these folks have really spent a lot of time looking at what are your consumer behaviors, how do people do what they do, and then how do you create that self-service environment that eliminates the friction of you wanting to go in there and do that. So truly a very quick, easy, and efficient way for you to get the products and services that you want without, without waiting in line. And frankly, doing the things that the majority of Americans hate doing right now, which is face-to-face -face transactions. I'd rather go through Home Depot, right, with a handful of assorted screws that I have to look up on the computer than actually go stand in line to, through the cashier to start telling her why I need the handful of screws. And three quarters of Americans have all converted to self-service for similar reasons. It's faster, it's more efficient, and they'd rather just get in and get out. And especially now, thanks to the pandemic, right? We don't want those face-to-face -face transactions and that conversation. Everybody wants to be as far away from that as possible. You know, and 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 one one of the one of the ways to take advantage of Amazon obviously is is become an Amazon Prime member. And can you tell me a little more about your VIP preferred uh, uh, program? Oh, absolutely. So, so VIP preferred is, you could think of it as the, if you will, Apple pay for, for gaming in that folks register one time, very similar to the way you would do an, an Apple pay or a Venmo or what have you. And then it really creates the opportunity for global payments to then uh, go in, evaluate that player and pr provide them with an amount of money that they can, that they can play in the casino. And they know that every transaction that they do is guaranteed. So unlike having having that obscure bank who may or may not allow you to participate, Global steps in. We tell you the amount of money that's there and available, and we can we can guarantee all of those transactions get approved. Likewise, on the other side of that is the operator perspective, whereby as customers are transferring money from their financial accounts, Global warrants all of those transactions so that from a from an operator perspective. It's cash. You've got cash coming in. If I want to spend fifty thousand and somebody else wants to spend five dollars, doesn't matter. Global steps in. The money's guaranteed. And if there's a problem, we deal with that with the consumer on the backside. All the while, the property's made whole. Wow. Well, it, it, you know, um, I have another question about um, why you chose to launch this product in Indian country. Why? Why do you think the opportunities here in Indian country as opposed to commercial? Why, why the opportunity? I'm sorry, I missed the last part of your question. Why did you uh, choose to launch your technology first in Indian country with your tribal partners? And can you tell us a little bit, bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Well, you know, certainly Global's got a long history of, of working in Indian country for, for, for decades. Um, you know, there's tribal country, right, is very, very family. It is very customer oriented. And it's really much more about it's really much more about the community. And frankly, it's those, it's that community relationship that I think also drives that compelling desire to deliver a very rich customer experience and a very rich consumer experience. So what we found, I think, really is that is that Indian country is far more prone to, to trying new things and delivering new things that get that customer to want to come back again and again and again and continue to be a part of the family or the community that that uh, that they want to enjoy. And so it's making those connections and delivering that that you know we found folks to be uh, far more progressive um, and far far less I get what's the right way to say this um, they don't really typically have as much of that well we've always done it this way kind of an attitude it's they are looking about things in their everyday lives and saying, wow, people are using Amazon. People are using Uber. People, shoot, the phone replaced the television as the main screen in America's life in 2017. So when I think about 
where technology is going, we find that you know our customers in in uh, Indian territory are are far more adept to embrace those kinds of technologies and put them into place. So it's been a it's been a great relationship and a great partnership. Well, you know, you you and it brings you right into my, into my uh, next question, which is um, about responsible gaming. You talked about frictionless, and you talk about um, um, this new medium. Can you tell me a little bit about your uh, um, your practices with responsible gaming? Yeah, uh, absolutely, absolutely. And this one's um, I've got a you know really it's a personal as well as a professional uh, desire to to do things here um, relative to. You know, Folks that have challenges, whether it's drugs, alcohol, gaming, what have you, right, will go to great lengths to participate. They'll go to the wrong side of town. They'll pawn their car, car title on the way to the casino. Most of our traditional responsible gaming kinds of things are simply going to provide roadblocks to folks that don't necessarily have a problem, all the while they're more or less speed bumps to people that do. So one of the things that we've we've done with our our digital ecosystem is really connect all of our products and services. So from VIP preferred that operates in the cage to the kiosks to now the mobile device, they're all an interconnected ecosystem. So that if you want to if you want to self exclude yourself when you when you tell Global Payments you want to self exclude, you're self excluded across the country. It's not like you're not a pro you're a problem gambler at Casino A. But Casino B, you no longer have a problem. For us, you tell us you want to self-exclude, you're out. Likewise, if you wanted to go through and set your own limit, because for even though right, you may be able to afford a lot of money to play at a casino for you, you don't want to play more than $200 a week, or you don't want to play whatever that, may, whatever that amount may be. We, we establish those limits within the ecosystem, and it doesn't matter what property you go to, it doesn't matter what channel that you're in, that you're participating in. Your limit is your limit, and we we respect that. And you've got the ability to change, of course, that stuff, but you've got to have an appropriate amount of waiting time so that you're not under the influence of some kind of a hot evening or whatever that may be that might make you want to change your mind. You can change your mind. We're just not going to take action on that for for 24 plus hours. Wow, that's that's actually really wonderful news, Chris, because I think it's very important that us in the industry are, are very uh, aggressive in dealing with these issues. I think it's important when when we're introducing these new forms of, of payments and new uh, verticals that that we are addressing these issues. And, and as you mentioned earlier, you know, in Indian country, family is very important to us. And our customers are family to us, so it's very important that they're taken care of also. And I think you'll see this in Indian country again and again and again, where these type of programs are very important to us. So I have one more question for you, Chris. So what makes global gaming, global payments gaming solutions, the industry leader in cashless, contactless, and touchless gaming, my friend? Oh boy, I think there's a whole uh, there's a whole lot to that question. How much this, more time do this, we have? Another this hour is your and a half? time. You know what? I'll give you five, brother. I'll give you five. Okay, <laughs> knock it out of the park, man. Right down the middle. You know, I think I think the thing that just make truly that makes us the leader is the fact that we do what we say we're going to do. As as uh, one of the CFOs of of uh, one of the places where we've rolled out uh, has has said to other customers in our presence is Global was the only company that I've ever been to where what I saw in their facility relative to the demo matched exactly what is on the floor. So we don't talk about pretty PowerPoints. We don't talk about all of these great things that are gonna happen at some point in the future. We really talk about what we can deliver today. And that is a very seamless customer experience that will get those customers to come to the casino more often We'll get them to consolidate their spend from other properties in a way that is compelling and, and really supports the return on investment that our, that our properties want to make in, in delivering these kinds of solutions. I mean, at the end of the day, brand loyalty is incredibly fragile today. Very, very fragile. And perfect example of it is the majority of, the, of Americans will jump in their car and drive to the next gas station when the pump doesn't accept their card. So brand loyalty and the ability to change for convenience purposes is very fast and very, very, very quick today. And that's why when we roll out a solution like VIP mobility or like our financial centers, 
they have to work. They have to deliver the results that that customer wants today, because if they don't, neither one of us are ever going to get those people back. They're going to go find someplace else to play. And, and like I said earlier, when, when the music stops from this record record year that we're having, boy, I want to make sure that when they when that music does stop, that they're sitting in your place. They're the one that's reaping, reaping the benefit, not the guy down the street or your competitor 20, 20 minutes away. Wow. Thank you very much, Chris, for that, that uh, um, very good answer. And uh, also, you know, unfortunately, our time is up and we really appreciate well, it. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. We got you. Can you hear me, Chris? Well, you know what? And uh, just in time, you know, we were just wrapping up. It sounded like Chris had a little problem right there. So I'd like to thank our guest this week, Christopher Justice, president of Global Payments Gaming Solution. Uh, we really appreciate him being here. Let me give him a second before we can say goodbye. Cause I think you all right, bud. Can you hear me, Chris? You know, if I would have stopped two minutes ago, this thing would have ended up perfect. So Chris, again, we want to thank you, you very much. I want to thank you for being our guest this week. Uh, again, uh, this will be available for download. Uh, we appreciate having Chris and everyone here and remember, uh, if you want to get in touch with them, you can get in you touch with uh, the Global Payment Gaming TV. Solutions. So this again, we'll recorded. talk to you very soon. Thank you all for attending. We'll talk to you very soon. Chris, can you hear me one more time? All right, listen, brother. Thanks. Welcome. We appreciate it. We know, man. It's technology. We just had this conversation is that sometimes the best laid plans are killed by technology in a heartbeat. So, all right, my friend, thank you very much. We will talk to you soon and thank to all our guests. We appreciate you guys joining us. We'll talk to you again real soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.